what is going on youtube family discord family in the building thank you guys so much for stopping by the trader shop and giving us a little bit of your time this is another edition of top down market analysis with t hobbs um and man it's about to be a doozy i'm not gonna lie it was some crazy stuff that went down last week that we got to talk about and then like how we see in the market kind of moving forward but first and foremost thank you guys so much for giving us a little bit of your time please make sure you tip the barbers aka hit the like and subscribe button turn the notification bells on so you get notified every time we go live and or put out a video that being said we also like to thank you guys for helping us reach another milestone we're at 1200 subscribers on our way to 1300 and you know potentially 2000 by the end of the year so we're just going to try to keep moving keep moving forward keep producing good content and then going live uh five days a week monday through friday if you'd like to support the channel don't forget to hit that apex discount code if you're using prop firms uh we have codes for take profit and top step as you can that you can use as well and then if you're interested in a good community of traders you can join the discord um, or if you just want to support the channel, you can join the Discord there as well to support it. All right, now that we got all out of the way, all the things you can do to donate to the to the church charity. Let's get into the market breakdown. All right, so on my left, I got the NASDAQ. On my right, I got the S&P 500. I'm starting them off like this because I feel like this gives a much better comparison of the two. And we can kind of compare them in real time together, right? We don't have to, we can shorten the video basically. All right, so... What did we get last week we talked about this doji right here i talked about this doji candle on the monthly um potentially being the start of an evening star pattern basically this is the star and it's an evening star because the sun goes down after in the evening right so that ended up playing out pretty well and i believe that we talked about eighteen thousand. you go watch the last video eighteen thousand was basically the key for the bears to break right we were consolidating consolidating but never going into more than 50 percent of the high of this doji candle which is another thing we pointed out that level was at like 585 591 something like that we tapped into that level and we just completely dumped now i'm a fan of saying i was right and all that other good stuff and, and you know saying my plan hit and normally you see me come on here and i'll be like yeah this is the level i call but let me tell you something no way, form of fashion did anybody have a 1,000 point sell-off, a 6% drop, which is double the amount that we normally drop within a week for the NASDAQ. Nobody had that in their plan. 3% is a big week. This week we dropped 6% and we'll get into that a little further. Um, looking over here at ES, it's the same thing except it's a different type of candlestick pattern. Instead of printing that evening star that we got on NQ, we actually printed a bearish engulfing candle, right? So this is a, a nice basing candle, which turned out to be a basing candle, and then just a complete dump, right? As far as structurally on the monthly, they're both below um, the previous high, right? This was the previous high at 17,972. We came way below that. So it, the, the, the thing that I would be looking for is for price to come back and retest the next stop point right like the next stop point is going to be on the monthly is going to be that six seven two eight level which is the previous high of the the high that brought us here right like this is the previous all-time high that we didn't even stop at we just blew right by that but now inside of this uptrend you anticipate price after breaking above this high to come back and retest either the low or the high that brought it here right and so far we're we're pretty darn close we're about 400 points away so that's i mean inq can do that in one day so the question is are we going to dump further and retest this or continue to dump further and retest this or start to trade back up because as you'll see when we get to the weekly there's a lot of levels that we haven't retested same type of similar thing going on on inq i mean on es right we flew right past this 50 69 level which was the previous all-time high we're we're headed back down to retest the high and or low that brought us here right we broke above the high we could come back down here and retest 47.93 um and then we have 45.33 to the low side and then obviously coming i mean we come all the way back to october prices again yeah i don't put anything past this market at this point because i feel like 
this entire rally was falsified, right? So that being said, let's drop down to the weekly chart on both on both uh, instruments. And we can discuss what's going on from a weekly standpoint, right? Um, on the weekly, <laughs> I mean, it's basically more of the same. If you guys remember, we talked about this consolidation in the previous video. And I kept saying it, I kept saying it, 18,000, we gotta break 18,000, that's gonna be the level. Once we break 18,000, I thought that 17,612 was definitely something that price would look to take out. But now <laughs> we're taking out the February 20th level. We took out, February 20th is important, significant, because February 21st was NVIDIA's earnings day. So we took out that week in one candle, which is crazy. And it's mostly because NVIDIA sold off. And then we went and took out January 29th scandal, which was important because I believe that was CPI week, right? And then we started to eat into this weekly demand zone right here, which I was like, I was completely shocked, like mouth drop, right? But again, one thing that we talked about in the last video was there was rumors of Iran war talk and all that stuff. I said, my prayers went out to them, but I knew that there was a possibility of that inflating oils oil prices inflating gold and we had already been seeing gold going on a crazy rally basically commodities run and then eventually the etfs and the stocks dump and that's exactly what we got i believe it was thursday night thursday night we got some news that there was an explosion or something like that and that's what accelerated this candle like we were already headed to like a three percent down week but this candle got accelerated by the news week and we basically printed two days in one week right like the sell-off was equivalent to a two-day sell-off so this candle had a little bit an asterisk to it so the question is did we sell off too much or is this just beginning things that i'm going to be looking for on the nasdaq is when we come down to the daily right you're going to see that there's huge gap candles right the, the daily can the daily candles are massive right therefore at some point, the buyers are going to want to step in and we usually get a retest of 18,000. We did not get a retest of 18,000, not a clean retest at all. Like we dropped below 18,000 and we never saw it again. This entire dump. So I anticipate price coming back up to the high that brought it here. Maybe not coming all the way back up here, but I believe 18,000 would be a good level to come back to whenever this selling finds a bottom. I don't know when that's going to happen. But to the upside, that's basically what I would be looking for, a retracement into some of these previous lows, right? 1746875, 17602, and then ultimately back up to 18,000 before we continue back to the downside, if that's what price wants to do. To the downside, however, on the weekly time frame, the market's gonna try to eat through the bears while they're down here, they're gonna try to take out this low too, right? So you can see if this demand zone doesn't hold, you best believe price is going to be looking to take out price all the way down to about 16580. And then <laughs> it's going to be a different conversation at the end of the week if we if we start taking out these lows, because at that point, we're going to be back to historic lows. Like, again, like this is if we come all the way back down here, which, again, I don't put anything past the market because we're already back to. The beginning of the year prices right like this is january prices that we're at right now this is the first of the year january 2nd was the last time we were at this level that means that we basically almost in this one candle right if you think about it this one weekly candle engulfed about seven weeks worth of buying so in one week we we basically brought price back down to january prices which is crazy when you think about it so to say that the market can't get back to october prices you think about it fundamentally, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense, right? Like it, it makes sense that we could come back here because fundamentally the market was buying because tech stocks were going crazy. But remember, we talked about this in like our first video, tech stocks were going crazy to the upside, but they were the only thing going crazy to the upside. The rest of the market was still in a bear market. In addition to that is this rally was falsified by the idea that we would get multiple rate cuts this year, right? the market was pricing in multiple rate cuts and listening to some of these Fed, Fed speakers, including Jerome Powell, right? Listening to them and seeing the data increase in regards to inflation leads me to believe that we won't get Fed hikes or we won't get Fed cuts, interest rate cuts until 2025, right? Which means that all of this is priced incorrectly. And if that's the case, 
October may be the least of our worries. Just saying. I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news, but hey, I'm just calling it like I see it. All right. Let's go over to ES and talk, talk, talk about its weekly breakdown. ES, unlike NQ, did not spend a lot of time consolidating up, up here. Instead, it put in that doji candle, that evening star pattern at around March 25th, and it really never looked back, right? It's been selling off this entire time. And I discussed how much weaker, I shouldn't say weaker, it's just accelerated ES was going to the downside, right? Like it had made its decision much faster than, he, than ES did, I mean, than NQ did. Therefore, structurally, um, NQ or ES is below that 5161, which if we look over here on NQ, that's this structure right here. It got below that a week before NQ did. And then it came down and took out this low, which is equivalent to this low here. But it's actually stronger than NQ on this last candle, right? I was actually trading this on Friday, which I was upset that it didn't do what NQ did. But from a structural standpoint, ES is actually much stronger than in Q in a sense, right? Because if you look at this, this structure right here that was formed January 2nd, in Q is trading 50% of that level already, right? In Q is already there, right? At least 30% of that level already. ES though, hasn't even come to the top of that level. In ES would have to start trading into 4845 to even equal structurally where in Q is right now. So the question is, that will be answered by the market is, is NQ selling off ahead of ES, meaning ES is going to catch up, or is ES showing strength, which will then rise NQ back to the top? I have my own thesis. I'll break it down as we get closer to price. All right, let's drop down to the daily chart for both instruments. There we go. And daily right there. There we go. All right, and we can analyze this until we blew in the face, but it's going to say the same thing no matter how you look at it, right? More selling, ultimately, right? We had this level here at 17.639, which was my prediction for last week. And again, the market decided to come down further and further. Now, I've explained on the weekly and on the monthly exactly what's going on here. So I'm not going to waste too much time here. I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my levels um, that I had charted out for the four hour and we'll drop down to the four hour so you guys can see kind of what I'm looking at, how I'm looking at price going into next week. So let me just jump down here. We'll pretty much skip that daily daily breakdown. It really don't make no sense. It's kind of repetitive. All right. So let's go down to the four hour and we'll kind of find some levels down here that I think price can return to. And I'll kind of share with you why I'm looking at these levels now. This particular, this first red line right here, right? This red line right here is 50% of this entire move, right? Like this, this entire move from October all the way to all time highs in March 20th, right? That's what this 50% level represents, right? That level sits at 16,653.75. If we're gonna find buyers, we need to find them there, right? Like if not, Oh, October, here we come, right? Like that's that, that's all I can say about that, right? Now, the other level right here at 16,94475, this level is very important because it is 50% of a weekly demand zone, right? That demand zone that I showed you on the weekly, this red line right here represents 50% of it, right? So therefore, I'm definitely gonna be looking to see if buyers want to step back up on the weekly demand, right? It's gonna show me kind of like, okay, at least we're finding, we still have buyers down here a weekly demand. Everybody's not vacating the premises, okay? So on the four hour, I'm gonna be looking for 1698475 through roughly about 16915 to find buyers. And I'm gonna be looking to take price up pretty significantly because after all of that selling, whenever we do find buyers on a macro level, they should be willing to start trading all the way back up to here, right? And one thing we talked about on the on the in the weekly was all of these huge gap candles, right? This is 18,000 right here. At some point, I expect price to come back up here and retest this level. I don't know if it's this week, I don't know if it's the following week, but before we head lower, I think we come back up. Now, everybody's going to be looking for 18,000 to be tested, but my thought process is everywhere that price consolidated, that means that there's leftover sellers. So, per day, that's all I'm going to be looking at is 
this level here at 486, 17486. This level at 752. This level is 792. Now, be aware that if we do decide to come back up, we could do it really fast, right? We got core PCE. We got a bunch of fundamentals to, to that could push us up really fast. So don't be in a rush if we start coming back up. Once we change character, don't be in a rush to short this market back down because the market could have an ultimate destination back to 18,000 before starting to trade lower, right? So just remember that part of it. This is also a good week for consolidation to occur for the first two, two, maybe three days of the market, just due to the fact that we have a lack of fundamentals that are flowing through the market this week. So keep that in mind. And we'll go through that here in a second as well. All right. So looking at the four hour on ES, it's the same thesis, except it's much lower. That 50 percent of the entire move sits all the way down to 4785. That's why I think ES is going to be the driving force that pushes both of these instruments back up. I just don't see ES trading down another 200 points before we get a retracement back to the upside. Just my opinion, we'll see what happens. Therefore, the level that I'm watching to the bullish side on ES is 495875 through roughly about 4932. Again, this is that weekly demand zone that we called out before that ES hasn't really gotten to yet. So I'm expecting ES to maybe come down here, find buyers and start to trade back up. After all of this aggressive selling, I think it's crazy to assume that the market is going to continue to sell off without some type of relief. Crazier things have happened, right? I'm not saying I'm Nostradamus or anything like that. I'm just saying usually this is the week that we can expect the market to start reversing and or not reversing, but basically retracing. So am I super bearish? I'm bearish now, but am I bullish down here? Yeah, I'm pretty bullish down here. Right? Like I'm expecting the market to start retracing a little bit going into next week. So those are my levels to the bearish side. Again, it's the same thesis. I'm looking for 54, 50, 42, 75, but I'm not going to jump in front of a train if we start pushing up higher, because I, I believe if we start pushing up higher, that's exactly what the market is going to want you to do. The market is going to want you to short here, 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 right? So that's going to be free liquidity because the market is going to be making a decision to go all the way back up. Right. So I'm going to be very cautious with my short opportunities. If we start trading back up, I'll be even I'll be better. I'll feel better shorting the market if we can break through this low, which anticipates which I'll then anticipate sellers wanting to trade price lower. So that that's kind of my thesis on that. So let's jump right into some of the catalysts that we have going into next week and we'll look no further than meta google and microsoft well why because they're part of the mag 7 and in three days meta reports their earnings we're going into the most anticipated season of the year every three months the mag 7 reports and it's going to drive the stock market crazy never fails either it's going to be to the downside or to the upside this is how we're kicking off the week right i believe wednesday it says in three days so yeah when tuesday or wednesday is when they're going to be reporting the 20 24th today's date is the 21st so tomorrow yeah, yeah, yeah so wednesday wednesday they'll be reporting uh meta is going to report on wednesday then i believe google is going to be reporting on thursday and then microsoft is also going to be reporting on thursday and i believe they report after the market closes if i'm not if i'm not mistaken because i mean these are pretty big companies so these companies will start to make decisions on the market, right? Not just their earnings. You need to pay attention. You don't have to pay attention to it, but things I'm going to be paying attention to is what they say in their earnings call. Like what, what are they forecasting? How are they feeling about inflation, right? How are they going to, how is this going to affect their bottom line? That's going to be a big deal to this market because these three stocks have a ripple effect in the market, right? Microsoft is going to affect Google, is going to affect Apple, is going to affect Amazon, like it's going to affect so much stuff, right? So definitely going to be paying attention to these, right? And then um, later, I believe next week, Apple is going to be reporting in the first week of May. Then we got NVIDIA, Amazon, all of these things are going to be happening really fast, right? So those are things that are definitely going to be catalysts for this market to move. In regards to the news, right? tomorrow there's no real news right consumer confidence in europe but there's no usd news whatsoever so this will be a good day for the market to kind of consolidate look for london tokyo to give you a good insight on what the u.s market will be looking to do in regards to ranges all right we go into tuesday europe 
London, uh, GBP, Great Britain, all of these are going to be having their flash PMI, their big red folder news. So it'll be a good day to participate in the London markets if you're if you're up that early, right? Like I think that that would be a really good lucrative situation for you. Also, New York session is going to have USD, um, flash manufacturing PMI, flash services, new home sales, always good market movers on Tuesday. But also remember, right after that, on Wednesday, there's no red folder news. Right. You got core durable goods and all that stuff, but it's blank. Right. But after the market, that's when the fireworks are going to be coming, coming out. Because like I just showed you, earnings are going to be on the 24th for the for three of the big dogs. Right. And then also on the 23rd, Meta is going to be reporting. So, again, this is going to be a really volatile day, in my opinion, on Tuesday. Moving on along to uh, Thursday, the 25th, we got unemployment claims. Right. And we have uh, pending home sales. I believe we have, yeah, there it is. We have GDP, right? That's always a good market mover. That one's going to be in the morning. And then, you know, we should be able to continue to volatility because on Friday, we end the week with even more volatility because we get the core PCE. This is what the, the Fed is going to be paying attention to very, very closely. So this number can really move the market. In addition to that, we got consumer sentiment. Right. If you don't know about consumer sentiment, this one usually is a huge market mover as well. So in regards to a volatile week, this is the fourth week, the fourth week of the month, and it usually starts to cool down. But the one caveat to that is when we have earnings, we're not going to get any sleep for a while in regards to this market metaphor metaphorically. Right. Because the next two or three weeks is going to be non farm payrolls. Then you're going to have earnings. Then you're going to have uh, PC, uh, CPI again and the Fed speaker. Like the next two months are going to decide our fate heading into this summer, right? When usually the market starts to sell off anyway. So having all of this news right around that time, it's not voting well structurally. It's not voting well with the commodities going up. Like everything is looking like we're about to start heading to the downside, which again lines up with the season that we're in. So. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I really appreciate you guys once again, tuning in, giving us a little bit of your time. Justin and I will be live Monday through Friday uh, for uh, three hours, basically uh, calling out price, reading the market, breaking down our analysis. Make sure you're there for the pre-market 30 minutes prior to the market opening. That being said, my name is T Hobbs. This is The Trader Shop, and we'll catch you guys on the next one, man. Peace.